Hello all, Schuster here. I have recently, just a day or two, picked up this new pure sine wave inverter. It is a budget inverter. It's called a Viver. At least that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Viver. And I only say budget because it was relatively inexpensive for how much a 5,000 watt pure sine wave actually cost. And as you can see, 5,000 continuous watts. Took me a while to get this, even though it's fairly inexpensive. But I'm going to use it to upgrade the uh, solar backup for my well. And I wanted to see how well it worked, considering all total it cost about $400, which is very, very inexpensive for a pure sine wave inverter. It does have the standard off and on switch and receptacles that you can plug in, but I am going to be using the terminal block right there because these inputs will not give me the power I need to run my well, and these will. I'll be showing you how I'm going to take this out and I'm going to hook it up. What I got with this, by the way, was the manual which I hope will show me how to do the block. If not, then I'll figure it out on my own. About eight fuses, two cables, but they seem quite small for a 5,000 watt. So I'm going to use some of my own made cables. I want at least two gauge, maybe zero two gauge. Have to take a look, see how much power I'm running through from my well. And I've got a, what is this, some type of remote control. Yes, I don't know how much I'll actually be using that. Okay, so we have four. Since we're talking about it, four inputs here. Off and on switch. The connection for the, right there, for the remote USB. The block, of course, but I'll be, like I said, showing you that in more detail when we do it. When we actually take it out there and connect it. We have a fan in the back and two terminal ports for our batteries. Okay, we're going to take this out in just a moment. And we are going to hook it all up. And I'm going to show you how well it does or uh, does not run. All right, I will see you out there. We are back into my battery room. What I have done here is I've taken, disconnected my old inverter from the block, taken the wires that come from the house, and connected it to the new block. Just make sure you, when you do it, you have the live, the ground, and the neutral in the right positions. One thing I already don't like about this a little is that I would rather these stationary ones are on top. Because since I these are on top, since I had to bring this down, as you can probably see if I get my finger out of the way, several of my plugins are not going to be available now. And I don't like that. But we did. This is my disconnect from the house. I, of course, turned it off. When I move this over, they're not that hard to do, really. Just make sure, like I said, you put the live and the ground and the neutral in the right place. And your uh, terminal block should tell you which is which, at least. Both of these do. It will tell you which is live, and so does this. Then, once I have that hooked up, show you the back. I disconnected cables going to the battery. So the negative and the positive are connected really well. I did not install this down because this isn't going to be its permanent location. This is just going to be temporary while I'm testing it. So now this all connected, we're going to turn it on. It's starting to come on. 13.1 volts it says. And it has the current and the hertz. And, of course, the symbol showing the pure sine wave. How many watts is coming out, which is zero at the moment. And battery level. 
right there. It shows it's charged up. As I test this throughout the days and weeks, we will find out just how accurate this all, this is. But at the moment, for its price point, which is right around $400, shipping taxes and everything, that's pretty good. And I'm hoping it will work. And I'll be able to use it. Because it needs not only to run the lights I have in the house and such, it needs to run my well pump too. Okay, so we're going to turn it on and come back and see what happens. Well, it's on. We're going to turn the power in the house off and see how it looks if it's actually running a load. So, stand by. It has now come on. And we are at 17.53 watt. Well, it's going to move up and down. The lights are on in the house this morning. So the watt, it's going to be, the watts is going to be dropping and coming back up, back and forth quite a bit. But we did want to make sure that it actually ran the lights in the house and the freezer and the refrigerator and whatever else just temporarily connected. What we haven't done yet is the water. We want to make sure that the water will work. And I'm about to go turn that on now. All right. My well pumps has come on. Actually, both of them. I have two. One that comes into the house, and then one that brings it into the aerator I have. And we went to 3,000, and it still ran. Now it dropped back down. I assume one of the pumps went off. My only concern is where it says 12.6. If the well pump stay on long enough and that drops too much, it could turn the inverter off. Even though my batteries here have plenty of juice. They were fully charged when we started. These are Power Queens, 12 volt and 200 amp hour each. I don't suspect the voltage will drop that far, even with the well pumps on. But it is something to be concerned about. But at the moment, it is running. Everything in the house that's connected to this is working. Everything in my battery room is on and is working. And well pumps are working. So 100% successful test. Transfer over. We'll be doing this the next several days, I suspect. But I want to get this first video out to show everyone that this relatively inexpensive inverter is actually at the moment doing what it is supposed to do. So if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, right, nice ones, put them down in the comments. That's always nice. And I'll probably put a link to this. Oh, everybody asked, did they send me this? No, nobody sent me this inverter. I bought it. All right, so shoestring out.